Hello and welcome to my modular sorting system version 2.0. First things first, we'll start at tier 0. Connect all your drop boxes together into one line using combiners. I have 4 here and generally they would go in your gatehouses but uh, you can have up to 32 and you can put them anywhere you want. Next we want a conveyor to pull the resources into this buffer box here. And make sure you put a combiner between the conveyor and your buffer box. I'll go over the purpose of this shortly. The buffer box should go inside your base in your loot room. Uh, you can have as many buffer boxes as needed. One tends to be enough for me, but if you find that's not enough, you can easily just daisy chain additional boxes to expand. Now we just have to add power to the conveyor and turn it on. As you can see, the conveyor is now pulling loot from the drop boxes. This completes tier zero. Now we can set up tier one. This is where the organization starts. Put down one conveyor for each box and add a splitter tree. Connect your splitters up like this and attach them to your conveyors and then into the boxes. Add a combiner tree on the other side and connect the outputs on your boxes to it. Loop the combiner around into your splitters. And finally, take the output of your buffer box and connect it to an input on your combiner tree. I'll change the pipe color to gray so it's easier to see where the pipe is coming from. Last thing we need to do here is set up our conveyor filters. For tier one, we want to use the category filters and I'll set this top one to weapons. You will of course expand this with each category you need. At the time of making this video, there's unfortunately no category for items like campfires, fridges, etc. So this is how to work around that. We will add all of these 11 categories to the filter list. Construction, weapons, clothing, electrical, traps, resources, tools, medical, food, ammo, and components. Ensure you change the filter mode to exclude listed items, then hit apply. This will move every item that is not in these categories into this box. There are two more categories I did not add to this list called other and fun. But since those are mostly all various placeables, just like the items category, I decided to let them sort into this box as well. You can of course change this however you see fit, but keep in mind conveyors can only have 12 filters. Let's add power to the conveyors and turn them on. I'll put these weapons and placeable items into one of the drop boxes here. And they'll get pulled into the buffer box. Then sorted into the tier one storage we set up. This next part is a largely asked for feature, multi-box. The problem with having more than one box with the previous setup is your loot would constantly cycle from one box to the next and back again. This new conveyor sandwich design will fix that problem. Place a conveyor here as usual, then add a splitter and a second conveyor on the other side, hence the term conveyor sandwich. Hook up a pipe from your splitter tree into the first conveyor, daisy chain all the boxes together, into the splitter and into the second conveyor. Set your conveyor filter here. Mine will be clothing. Set the second conveyor filter to the same as the first, but set the filter mode to exclude listed items. How this works is the first conveyor will act as normal and pull all the clothing items into the boxes. If there's a single stack item like clothing, it will fill all the boxes sequentially, box one, then two, etc. But if you have it set to a stackable item like stone, it will fill all four boxes, or however many you have, simultaneously. The second conveyor is to pull invalid items out of the boxes. Since it is set to clothing and the filter mode is exclude listed items, it will pull out everything that does not fall into the clothing category. Put down another combiner tree to connect all your multi-box setups into one line, and optionally, leave one input open for later use. Run this line into the combiner that leads into the buffer box. This is the purpose of that combiner. As conveyors cannot push loot through other conveyors, we need an open input into the buffer box that does not go through the buffer box conveyor. Let's power the conveyors and turn them on. I'll grab this armor and put it in a drop box. It will go through the buffer box, then into the armor box. Again, single stack items will fill multi boxes sequentially. If we put an AK in the armor box here, the second conveyor will realize it doesn't belong there, 
move it into the buffer box, and the weapons conveyor will pull it into the weapons box. It is important to note that, including your buffer boxes, you can only have up to 32 storage adapters connected in the original loop style here. In this case, I have one buffer box and two loop boxes for a total of three, but you would have quite a few more in the real build, of course. Multi-box setups do not add to this 32 box limit, and you can set up as many of these as you want with no limit. If you find you need more single box setups and you've already hit the 32 limit, you will have to set them up with the multi-box setup, even if it is only one box. The last thing we need to do in tier one is make another combiner tree for all the multi-box setups, which is the purpose of the splitter between the last box and the second conveyor. Now we need to set up tier two. Let's start out with a splitter tree and connect tier one into tier two. Place a combiner and merge a pipe from one of the tier one splitter outputs with the multi-box combiner tree and hook that up to the tier two splitter tree. The reason for the tier one multi-boxes needing splitters connected up this way is so that the tier two conveyors can access the boxes, otherwise they would only be able to pull from the single box setups since they are connected in the loop. Place conveyors for each of your boxes. In tier two, you will need to use the conveyor sandwich design for every box, regardless if it has one box or more. Splitters here are optional in Tier 2. The purpose they serve is for access if you want to add modules onto the system like auto lockers, auto TC upkeep, etc. I'll have a link to my modular system playlist in the description if you're interested. Hook up all your conveyors to the splitter tree and through to your boxes, splitter, and second conveyors. You can obviously take your time and make the pipes look a little nicer. Put down one last combiner tree and connect all the Tier 2 conveyor outputs together and output them into the buffer box. If you left an input empty on your tier one combiner tree, you can save a bit of time and just connect this line into there. Otherwise, just hook it up to the empty input on the buffer box combiner. Next, we need to set up filters. Tier two is for higher tier items to keep it separate from lower tier items. So we'll set specific item filters. I'll add metal chest plate, metal face mask, and a road sign kilt here for armor. To save a little time, I'll copy the filter options and paste them on the second conveyor. You may have to apply them, then reopen the UI to set the filter mode to exclude listed items. It doesn't hurt to double check all your conveyors saved properly and are on the right filter mode. I'll fill in the other conveyor filters here quickly. Let's power the conveyors and turn them on. This will now start taking the specified armor and guns from the tier 1 boxes and put them in these tier 2 boxes. To make sure this is all working, I'll put some metal frags into the armor box. The second conveyor will then see the metal frags don't belong, move them into the buffer box, and the metal frag conveyor will then pull them into your metal boxes. Since this is a stackable item, you'll see the conveyor split the metal frags among all of the boxes. What you may be thinking now is how the system requires twice as much power for all of tier two and for any multi-box setups you have in tier one, since it's using two conveyors per filter type. There's currently a feature to get around this. You can plug the filter fail from the first conveyor into the power in of the second conveyor, and this will keep it powered on at all times as long as the first conveyor isn't currently moving any items. As you can see, the second conveyor still works as intended by moving this building plan back into the buffer box. I put this in its own chapter here instead of part of the main build, as there is a possibility of this being patched out at some point, so enjoy it while you can. If you feel your drop boxes are too slow, there are three ways to speed them up. You can add storage adapters to each drop box, add a throughput doubler between the combiner tree and the buffer box conveyor, and you can add multiple conveyors. I believe the sweet spot to be two storage adapters on each box, daisy chained together, and a throughput doubler leading into the conveyor. To make a throughput doubler, put a combiner and splitter down next to each other. Run the drop boxes into the combiner, through to the splitter, and loop the splitter back around into the combiner. Connect one of the other splitter outputs to the conveyor, and you're done. This will effectively double each storage adapter. Since I have two adapters on each box, this will make it so the conveyor will pull four times from each box every five seconds. It's important to note this means every box counts as four storage adapters towards the 32 limit as well. So the higher speed you want, the less boxes you can have. For example, four adapters and a throughput doubler will mean each box counts as eight, meaning you'll reach the 32 limit with just four boxes. If you really want that much speed and need more boxes, you'll need to add a second conveyor. You can also add more adapters to your buffer box or boxes, 
and add a throughput doublet immediately after to increase the speed at which loot gets sorted away. But again, keep in mind this will add to your tier 1 32 box limit. As a side note, the drop box 32 limit and the buffer box slash tier 1 32 box limit are separate from each other. Here's a little demonstration of the drop box speed. Default will be 60 stone per stack every 5 seconds, but since this is 4x speed, it will move 240 stone every 5 seconds. One other problem which unfortunately doesn't have a fix is to do with stackable items that have health bars. This includes ladders, solar panels, fuses, and the other stackable item with a health bar. If I put 4 ladders in the output box and a damage ladder in the input box, it won't move as the conveyor is trying to stack the broken ladder with the unfinished stack of full HP ladders. I'll fill the stack up to 5 to fix that problem, but then another one arises. Once the damage ladder is in the output box, the conveyor will now attempt to stack every ladder in the input box with this broken one, but it can't since only full HP ladders can stack. This will clog up your buffer box with ladders and any other stackable item with health. Unfortunately, the only fix to this currently is to not have any damaged health stackable items in the sorting system. Either toss them out or have a separate regular box on the side for them. They may patch this in a future update, in which case be sure to check out my pinned comment. This concludes my modular sorting system v2. I have a diagram for their system linked in the description, as well as a Discord link to the Rustricity City Workshop. This is a fantastic community of players with a passion for all things electric and industrial in Rust, and always willing to lend a helping hand with any issues or problems you have with circuits. I'd like to thank you all for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. It's a huge milestone for me, especially considering I hadn't even hit 100 until earlier this year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.